Howdy everybody, Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist, Bob Langston from the North Carolina Zoo. Thank you for letting me come and spend a little time with you today. And we're going to do something a little bit different today. I know I say that every now and again, but this time it's for real. I'm going to talk a little bit about technology. And technology and nature are kind of connected. They're actually connected quite a lot. So I'll get into some of the ways that happens in the next few minutes. Now, technology is something we often make use of. You're using it right now to view this particular video. I used it to record this video and to edit this video and everything else. So we do rely on these quite a lot for a lot of different things, but nothing, none of this stuff actually happens without starting as a raw mineral in the ground. So in order to get the materials to make things like computers and television sets and things like that, quite often stuff has to be, I'll say recovered, but removed from where it's been buried. And in some cases it's been buried for hundreds of thousands of years. For example, plastics. Plastics, many of them, start off as petroleum products, so it relies on crude oil, and that has to be drilled and dug out of the earth. It's energy consumptive, and in some cases, it can cause some environmental problems. But we're going to talk about some other things here, and I actually have right here, I'm going to call this sort of, um, the best way to call it is a trash computer because, well, I fished this one out of the trash. So I can uh, take it apart right in front of you and kind of show you a little bit about it. So we're going to talk about recycling electronics, why it's important, what are the benefits of doing it, and uh, kind of, you know, show you some things that you can do to uh, be a little bit more environmentally friendly sometimes. First thing, reuse. Um, many people uh, think in terms of uh, computers as something that only has a lifespan of about maybe a couple of years. I heard, um, I don't know if this is true, but I heard this spoken one time that the Intel Corporation, who makes the uh, little chips that actually drive the computers, um, that Intel has a directive, a corporate directive, to double their processor speed about every 18 months. Now we've gotten far enough and fast enough so that they probably can't do that. They're actually adding more cores, more processing uh, equipment to each one of the cores as they go. But they do get obsolete. Before you toss them, you can actually reprogram them quite often. A lot of times people are going like, I can't do that, Mr. Bob, I'm kind of scared. Don't worry about it. In some cases, if you're going to toss it, it's just another chance for this to have a useful life without going into the trash or anything else. Now, I'm going to back up just a second. Typically, computers are not allowed in the trash in North Carolina. Back in 2010, our legislature passed a landfill ban that said you could not put computers, monitors, any of the peripherals, you can't discard that in the landfill. So you need to recycle them. We're coming up in uh, early November that uh, there's an event that's often referred to as America Recycles Day. Now this is sponsored by many of your Keep America Beautiful chapters, so you can actually sort of find that out by just Googling uh, uh, America Recycles Day in your location. So if, if there is a chapter around that's going to do that, it's an opportunity for you to recycle these properly. But if you want to reuse them, there are any number of operating systems, and if they're not too old, that's a big deal, uh, there are any number of operating systems which are available at no charge. Uh, they're Linux operating systems, and uh, there are some that can even run on old computers like this. They're designed for uh, a um, uh, not for only 32-bit uh, programming language. If I'm talking a foreign language, don't go anywhere. We'll come back to it in a second. But anyway, okay. So there uh, are things to do. Now I mentioned plastics. On the outside of this, and uh, this one uh, is an old Dell. Uh, this is a 521. This actually is plastic right here. So part of this started its life as a uh, petroleum product. Now, if you have one that's really, really old, more than 20 years old, I know, sounds ridiculous, but it can happen. If you have one of these that's more than 20 years old, much of the plastic here has a fire retardant in it. It's a chemical known as a polybrominated biphenyl. And you never want to incinerate that stuff. 
It's highly carcinogenic, and uh, when you try and burn it, the plastic itself will burn. The uh, fire retardant ultimately will become a soot that's in the air. You can breathe it. It can end up in the water. It's a bioaccumulative toxin. It'll stick around for a very long time. So again, properly discard them. So when you get into here, a lot of people, uh, I, I started taking these apart and repairing them myself probably uh, 15, 16 years ago. I built one just from scratch to see if I could do it. and. Uh, I learned a lot about things simply by doing this action right here. You open the case. Now some of them actually have a little strap somewhere back here on the edge that says voids the warranty if you open the case. If you're going to toss it, if you're going to toss it and get rid of it, don't worry about voiding the warranty, okay? Um, many of them have a latch. Some of them actually have some screws back here on the back edge. This one has a latch and the latch is up here. I'll turn this around so you can see it. It's right there. You pull that latch and I have it face down and ultimately let's do that pull the latch and everything opens up and once you get into here you can kind of see that it's nothing but a bunch of other boxes here's another thing all of this metal and stuff that's in here the metal itself is recyclable it's low carbon steel it's soft steel so it can be melted down and it can actually be made into more metal. The crazy thing about that is that um, for most metals, it's much more efficient energy-wise and has a lower carbon footprint to melt the metal and reform it than it does to dig the ore out of the earth. You have to get the iron, you have to get the carbon, you have to get any of the other materials, chromium, zinc, any of that other stuff that goes into the different types of steels. All of that has to come out of the ground. It can do tons of environmental damage. I'm going to talk in a minute about one item in particular that causes a lot of environmental damage. And uh, it can actually harm things like gorillas. So there's that. So once you get inside here, uh, there's a little navigating to do. This uh, device right here is your power supply that has carbon, uh, excuse me, it has uh, a copper in the wires. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Occasionally you'll find things that are removable. These little devices right here. Wait, before I talk about these, let's talk about the engine that makes this go. And I forgot to bring a screwdriver, but uh, the down, whoops, there go those. Down underneath this item, this is just a, uh, it's called a heat sink and a cooling fan. There's this tiny little item like this. And I'll hold this one up where you can see it. This is actually the entire brain of the computer. This is the processing chip. This one's an old Pentium 4, I believe. And no, it's a Celeron D. So it's an Intel chip. And uh, this one in particular, I can't remember what it came out of. I was just curious, so I took it out of it. Normally, you find this underneath the heat sink. They do generate quite a lot of heat, so they have fans to help cool everything down. The uh, chip itself has a lot of little pins on it. They go into a socket. The newer ones don't have the pins. They have a different way of connecting to the socket. Uh, but anyway, you have these pins. This is, uh, like I said, this is the old chip. It's made out of silicon. Silicon? It's primary ingredient, a lot of glass. So the silicon chips uh, in here, the, a lot of times the silicon parts can be ground up and they can be made into things like photovoltaic cells. You're saying, Bob, but it's not going to be real pure. It'll be dirty. Guess what? Photovoltaic cells work because they have impurities in the silicon wafers that make up the glass. So yeah, the processor. That's down in here. Another thing you'll find in here from time to time are these things. This is the hard drive. Whereas this is the memory, this, excuse me, this is the brain, this is the memory part of the brain. This is where all the programs are stored, it's where all your personal data is. If you can take these out of the computer, take it out and beat it up with a hammer, you can drill a couple holes in it, uh, three holes around and about, whatever, it destroys it, it can't be done. If you take these to a reliable re uh, recycler, they're going to grind these up and nothing ever happens with them. But anyhow, hard drive, that's what that is. And so all of this is in here. These are what are called memory sticks, RAM, random access memory. And uh, these just snap into some slots that are down in here. Let me see if I can get one of these correct. And bear with me for just a moment. This one has four slots. This is an older machine. So it um, uses older, slower stuff. So I'm gonna hold this up. The memory slots are in here 
down in here like this. You can add, subtract, do whatever you want to. The motherboard, that's this whole big green device down in here. And the motherboard uh, is limited as to what kind of processor it can take, what kind of memory it can take. But anyhow, the, the base of this the base of this, mother, uh, of this memory stick is made out of a, an epoxy material. So it's very heat resistant. They can still burn, but uh, it's very heat resistant. You'll notice the contacts on this are not brass. They're actually gold-plated copper. So there is some residual gold in these, uh, and this is one of the things that many of the recyclers like to reclaim. Uh, they'll get the silicon out of the chips, break all this apart, and then they grind this other stuff up, and it can become filler and things like other plastics, cement products, and stuff like that. One thing that I wanted to get to, and I'll mention this, is that, uh, as I said, a lot of the materials in here are recyclable. The North Carolina Zoo has participated in a program, in many programs, that we call SAFE programs. That stands for Saving Animals from Extinction. And the Gorilla SAFE program is administered through the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. The Gorilla SAFE program has been trying to recycle many of the smaller handheld devices, cell phones, tablets, MP3 players, and things of that nature, for years. And it's because of a mineral that's used in here. And I'll show you where it is in just a second, and I'll tell you what happens with it. The mineral itself is called columbite tantalum, or tantalum, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And uh, it's abbreviated Colton. And Colton comes from three locations, the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Central Africa, comes from South Africa, and there's a deposit of it that's found down in uh, Australia and New Zealand. And if you, um, and all, the only way they can get it, typically in uh, Africa, is by strip mining. That means that whoever owns the land will hire someone to come in, cut down all the trees. That's all the habitat for gorillas and they live on top of the land where the Colton is found. So at that point, uh, mineral guys will come in and they'll strip mine, which means you dig a big hole in the ground, you take out the minerals, you walk away and leave it as a big hole in the ground. It's not environmentally friendly, and generally it takes an extremely long time for that to recover. Where you'll find it in here, and I hope you can see this, is up in here you'll see these little things that look like miniature batteries. There's a bunch of them up in here in this part. Of, it's on the motherboard. That's this big green thing in here. It's on the board. You'll get some of these, and these are called capacitors. Capacitors have a funny function. Imagine, if you will, this is the positive charge of a, of a uh, electrical circuit. Now, if you want it to make a closed circuit, you're going to let the next part of it touch, the negative part. And instead, with a capacitor, you want to have a gap in the middle. Now there are air gap capacitors, so that what happens is on this particular plate, positive uh, charge builds up until it gets high enough it can jump across that gap. That's what happens when lightning strikes. You have a charge in the air and it builds until it can make an arc to the ground, or actually the ground arcs up. And so uh, you'll get that that happens. The best capacitors, the ones that are the most precise, have a layer of this tantalum, columbite tantalum material in between them, Colton. It's 100% recoverable, it's 100% recyclable, so by recycling your electronic devices, you can actually keep from uh, strip mining that's going to actually tear up the uh, habitat for gorillas. So these are just some of the uh, recyclable, reclaimable parts that you can find inside a computer. Again, I encourage people to recycle them properly. Here in Randolph County, there are some specialized collection days, but any time you can take them up to the old uh, solid waste facility, which is located up on Henley Country Road. It's near the animal shelter, and there's a wooden barn in the uh, uh, metal storage and appliance area. You can take them up there. You have to unload them and load them yourself, but you can put them in boxes and their pallets for various things like that. It's the proper thing to do. It makes most of this stuff is reclaimable. Some of it is reusable. There was a gentleman who was um, taking some of these uh, not too terribly old computers and putting together outfits for uh, college freshmen so that uh, they could actually, for a very, very low price, have a fully functioning computer that would get you through your freshman year. I think everybody now pretty much has a laptop, but that's another whole story. 
recycling. It's the right thing to do. It means the minerals can be reclaimed. It means the bulk of this will probably not end up waiting forever in a landfill to break down. It keeps any of the fire retardant materials from becoming bioaccumulative toxins. It'll cause cancer and it's really a good thing to do. Look Check in your community to see if there is an America Recycles Day in November. And uh, otherwise, check your, with your solid waste management folks and they can tell you how to properly recycle them. Keeps the environment cleaner, maintains habitat for animals. So all of those are benefits of doing this. For the North Carolina Zoo, and a couple of things real quick. We are open to the public right now. The weather is cooling off a little bit in spite of the fact that I'm sweating in my shirt right now. It's a warm day today. We've had rain since about Friday and uh, it's kind of nice that we have a nice sunny day now, but at the same time, it's a little bit warm. Anyhow, uh, for the North Carolina Zoo, as I said, is open to the public. You can visit our website at www.nczoo.org. Find out all of the uh, things you need to do as far as purchasing your tickets in advance, reserving a time to come into the park, and uh, also about special events. We are going to be doing Boo at the Zoo in a modified form, and that's coming up later this month in October. And you can find out all the details about that, reserve your spot, and plan on having a great day for the youngsters. That's just some of the stuff that's going on. You can also find out about any programming or online uh, remote education and things like that that we're doing. So please plan on coming to visit with us down at the North Carolina Zoo before too much longer. For the North Carolina Zoo, I'm Bob Langston, Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist. Get outside, take care of the environment, and whatever you do, be safe and take care. I'll see you next time, okay? Later. Bye now.